Well, one clue to this situation is that when the troubleshooter closed in the cutout, the primary fuse held for a few seconds, then burned open. It didn't blow. The troubleshooter remembers similar situations where primary fuses burned open because of cold load pickup, a situation which can occur when too large of a load is placed on the system too quickly. Being familiar with the systems that he works on, the troubleshooter knows that many of the homes in this area are total electric homes. And when a total electric home is without power for several hours, which has been the situation here, a large load may be placed on the system when power is restored. This happens because in addition to normal loads such as lighting and small appliances, many thermostatically controlled loads may try to start up immediately after power is restored. As the load on the system grows, it becomes too great and the lateral fuse burns open. With that in mind, the troubleshooter calls the dispatcher and tells her that the fused cutout burned open and that he believes the fuse burned open because of the load on the system. To reduce the initial demand that occurs when the lateral fuse is closed, the troubleshooter requests permission to open the fused cutouts on some of the transformers on the lateral, then refuse and close in the lateral cutout again. The dispatcher agrees with this action. So the troubleshooter goes to a transformer and opens the cutout. He then goes to a second transformer and opens the cutout there. Then he returns to the lateral and refuses the cutout. This time when the cutout is closed in, the fuse holds. With the lateral fuse closed, he then returns to the two transformers and closes in the cutouts for each. Once all of the customer's power has been restored, the troubleshooter informs the dispatcher that the lateral has been refused and closed in, and that the transformers he opened earlier have been closed in as well. The troubleshooter then completes the final step in the procedure. He documents the problem and the repair that was made. In this example, the problem affected more customers, and the troubleshooter spent more time analyzing data in order to locate and correct the problem. But he still followed the same basic methods that we saw in our earlier examples. He collected information about the problem, evaluated the information to determine a logical starting point for the troubleshooting, identified and located the problem by following a logical sequence, corrected the problem, and documented the problem and the repairs for future reference. During the procedure, he also followed the specific policies of his company. He maintained clear communication with the dispatcher, and he relied on his basic knowledge of the system and the equipment that he was working on. These same basic troubleshooting steps can be applied to any type of overhead system problem under any condition. By following basic troubleshooting steps, such as the ones we've covered in this program, and by following the specific policies of your company, you should be better equipped to troubleshoot problems in your system.